Hi everyone, Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. Today we're going to do the tilt shift effect, which makes things look miniaturized. So right now we're using one of my drone images, which give themselves really well to these tilt shift effects because you're kind of looking down and you've got a nice view, kind of like you were looking down at a model. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to convert to a smart object. So right click on the layers panel and choose convert to smart object. This makes it non-destructive and allows us to change things later on. All right, let's just go straight for the jugular. And what we want to do here is we want to apply the tilt shift effect. So let's choose filter. And you might think you're going to go all the way down to blur, but we are, but we're not going to use the blur. We're going to go one more to blur gallery. And then under blur gallery, you see all one here called tilt shift. So the way this works is the strip in the middle is going to be in focus outside there. And the bottom one, these dotted lines are going to be completely blurred. And then the area between the dotted line and the solid line is where there's going to be a transition of blur. This little wheel in the middle allows us to decide how much blur we want. So let's just crank that blur all the way up. And you can see, okay, that's how it works. Of course, you can also use the blur slider. All right, what we want to do is we want to find a nice slice of focus. So let's just drag this in. Notice as I'm pulling this in, I can pull the top part in or I can pull the bottom part in. If I hold the Alt or the Option key, I can bring both of these in at the same time, which is what we want. What more of a balanced effect is going to be nice. Same thing with the outside. We can bring that down or hold down the alt or option key and notice if I bring those very close, it's a very, very abrupt change. If I pull it apart, it goes a little bit more uh, blended. See that? And once I release, it takes a moment for that to show. So let's hit the alt or option. We're going to pull this down. We're going to get a narrow band of focus. Now what we want to do is put this at an angle. So if you want to do that, what you want to do is just go see those points there just on that point. And now we can move this around at an angle. Great. What we're going to do is hit the Alt or Option. I'm just going to enlarge this a little bit because I want a little bit more focus. There we go. That's going to work quite nicely. All right. So we can see we've got a nice slice of focus in here. We've still got a little bit of cleanup work to do because some of this is not quite looking realistic yet. And we'll fix that in just a moment. So what we're doing is looking at this transition area. You want this to look like a toy or a model. So generally a very abrupt blur, that's obviously too much. Around that area is starting to look quite good. And the way this works, okay, so imagine we have a model of say a building or a city. This is sharp, this is blurry. This can move throughout that model and you can see how that is going from sharp to blurry, it's passing through that. But if you look at something much larger, like a real city, the different field is not gonna work that way. You know, if you're shooting with a shallow diff of field, the front half of a building is going to be nice and sharp, but then that's going to fall off very, very quickly. Or if there is more, more of a fall off, it's not going to be halfway across the city. So that's what fools the eye into thinking things are miniature because the diff of field changes so rapidly. All right. So what we're going to do is click OK to apply it. Now we're looking pretty good. However, look at this. This is looking a bit weird, right? Because this technically is coming closer to you. So this should be sharp. So what we're going to do is we're just going to zoom in. And lo and behold, we have these filter gallery. And when we use smart filters, we get a mask. So all I got to do now is just paint on that mask with black on the areas that I want to be sharp. So let's grab a brush. Set the foreground color to black. Set the lift bracket key a little bit. And notice as I paint in here, we paint away the mask. And now it looks nice and sharp. Let's do the same thing with the flag. Go up there. Now if we zoom out, look at this. Ah, now it's starting to look more realistic. Probably the final thing I would do is maybe just give this a little bit of touch of vibrance. And the reason for that is when you're working in scale models, usually the painting, when you paint things, they tend to be a little bit more saturated than they would be in real life. And the other thing is um, when you look here, we've got atmospheric haze that you're not going to get in a model. So what we're going to do is just click on the adjustment layer 
And under the adjustment layer, we want to choose vibrance. And then we've got vibrance and saturation. We'll leave saturation where it is. We're just going to crank up the vibrance just a little bit. And what that does is it takes the areas that don't have a lot of saturation and it boosts the saturation in those. Um, and that's it. So if we look at that before and after, you can see it very subtle, but it gives it a nice look. So this is a shot uh, down Balboa Beach, which is not that far from where I live. I'm curious, where do you guys live? Let me know in the comments underneath. And by the way, if you learned anything new, also let me know. And one last comment is, what would you guys like to see me teach? Let me know in the comments underneath. Happy to oblige. And by the way, if you're new, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Great to have you with us. Consider hitting the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and you won't miss any of my videos. And anyway, guys, if you like this, do me a favor, hit that like button. It helps us with the algorithm. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.